Emmert International proudly presents the Trucking Job of the Year entry for the Specialized Carriers and Rigging Association. Fluid Catalytic Cracking, FCC, is the most important conversion process used in petroleum refineries. It's widely used to convert the high boiling, high molecular weight hydrocarbon fractions of petroleum crude oils to more valuable gasoline, olefinic gases, and other products. Cracking of petroleum hydrocarbons was originally done by thermal cracking, which has been almost completely replaced by catalytic cracking because it produces more gasoline with a higher octane rating. It also produces byproduct gases that are more olefinic and hence more valuable than those produced by thermal cracking. We don't often think of weather conditions in September, October, and even November as being particularly challenging. But during this transport from Tulsa to Billings, Emmert had a lot to deal with. In March, Emmert International was awarded the contract to transport a fluid catalytic cracking FCC reactor from a fabricator in Tulsa, Oklahoma to a refinery in Billings, Montana. Emmert had planned on using one of its 12 dolly suspension beam transporters, however all six of Emmert's 12 dolly transporters were in use. Four of them were being used in Lewiston, Idaho, under loads stopped by environmentalists waiting for the resolution of permit issues in Idaho and Montana. Using existing W40 by 431i beams from a set of gantry tracks and the header beams and running gear from another transporter, Emmert's engineering department designed a 12 dolly perimeter suspension transporter that would require minimal rework in order to haul the reactor. Partway into the planning process, Emmert learned that the reactor was larger than the dimensions that were provided when the project was bid. The additional 9 feet in length was not a major problem, however the diameter increased by 10 inches plus a 12 inch tailing lug had been added. The customer wouldn't allow the tailing lug to be removed, nor could the vessel be rotated for transport. Combined, these changes increased the height of the reactor by 22 inches. Transport saddles from a previous load were modified with the addition of engineered pad eyes and rigid hangers to drop the saddles down to hang just off the ground and reduce the transport height to 24 feet 2 inches. Starting well in advance of loading and continuing during the transport as conditions changed along the route, Emmert had to coordinate with more than 75 overhead utility companies and municipalities in order to travel through their respective territories and jurisdictions in order to obtain state and local approval for the permitted routes. The political climate involving superloads and megaloads has changed significantly in Montana in recent months. The planned movement of several hundred megaloads from Lewiston, Idaho across the Rockies to Missoula, Montana and then north into the oil sands region of Alberta has brought about a campaign by a coalition of environmental groups to restrict the movement of these large loads. The impact is being felt by anyone moving superloads and megaloads, even when the loads are not bound for Alberta. The regulations and standards that Emmert had to comply with in order to have its permits approved took months of review and planning and involved submitting and resubmitting detailed route inspections, traffic control plans on a variety of highway types, and approvals from all the communications and power companies along the route in order to coordinate their assistance in the movement of the load through their territory. Once Emmert had its permits approved, the utility companies identified and the transporter equipment built, Emmert mobilized to Tulsa. Emmert acquired the Oklahoma transport permit and loaded the reactor. Even as the reactor was being loaded, the challenges began. Remnants of Tropical Storm Hermine produced widespread rainfall, locally heavy with up to 13 inches in some locations in Oklahoma, which triggered significant flooding. The Oklahoma Department of Transportation notified Emmert that the approved route was no longer available for travel due to derating of state-maintained bridges. The derating of the bridges meant that Emmert's transport configuration no longer met their bridge crossing analysis. While working with the Oklahoma DOT, Emmert was able to come up with an alternate route that did pass analysis. However, this new route, which was the only one the state would approve, took Emmert through different communication and power companies territory beginning on the first day of travel. 
The change in the route delayed Emmert's departure by four weeks while county road permits were negotiated and the overhead utility companies contacted and new arrangements made. Portions of this route had apparently never been used before for overheight loads, as certain fiber optic lines were hung across the highway in such a way that they could not be lifted high enough to allow the load to pass beneath them. Several weeks passed while the lines were reconfigured and raised permanently. After the lines were raised and the Oklahoma permit reissued, Emmert remobilized to Tulsa. During the first two weeks of movement, Emmert encountered more heavy rains which caused further delays due to the high water and saturated roadways which had become too soft to support the load. Considerable time was spent adjusting the schedules between Emmert and each utility company, replanning, permitting, implementing, and coordinating their assistance due to the weather delayed travel. During its transport, Emmert was required to make three separate reroutes, principally due to the accumulated effect of the delays pushing out the travel days into time frames when road construction was beginning on various segments of the route. One reroute in Kansas was due to a short-line railroad company defaulting on their approval to remove a railroad crossing arm. Emmert was able to gain county approval for this reroute only after posting a $225,000 bond in the event their substandard county road suffered any damage. After the crossing and inspection to verify there was no damage done by Emmert, the bond was released without any claims. Heavy rains that plagued the transport from day one continued periodically on into northern Wyoming, followed by ice and snow. There were approximately 30 miles of travel on a Wyoming County road that was delayed for several days due to heavy rain. Additional equipment was required in order to move the load up this route due to the softness of the road and restrictions on the washed out surrounding roads. In Montana, Emmert was delayed off and on several days at a time by ice and snow. Approximately 20 miles of the U.S. highway going north out of Forsyth was solid ice, and the temperature did not get above 10 degrees for three consecutive days. Once the weather warmed up enough to allow the ice and packed snow to be removed or to melt off and the roads become passable, Emmert was able to proceed on into Billings. Travel through the city of Billings was required to be done during the night. The final obstacles to delivery of the reactor were three overhead road signs that had to be removed from the roadway before the reactor could travel through Billings to the refinery. On arrival at the refinery, the reactor was unloaded 84 days after loading, of which 27 days were actual movement days. The FCC converter was safely delivered without injuries, incidents, or damage to equipment or the load. Overall dimensions, length 215 feet, width 25 feet 6 inches, height 24 feet 2 inches. Total gross weight as moved, 667,361 pounds. Planning the job, 390 hours of planning, 120 hours of engineering, 270 hours of planning and coordination. Permits and approvals from the states of Oklahoma, Kansas, Colorado, Wyoming, and Montana, along with city, counties, and railroads. Physical elements encountered unimproved dirt and rocky roads, customers' dimensions changed, route changes, flooded roads, overhead utility services, snow and icy weather conditions, highway closures, night moves, safety considerations, weather conditions that remained below freezing, traffic control, local radio stations and newspapers to notify public, execution, 4,350 man hours on the job, ingenuity and innovations, modified existing equipment, adapting existing equipment from other equipment Emmert had on hand, engineered pad eyes that were added to the transport saddle to reduce overall height, loss prevention, no accidents, no injuries, no incidents, no property damage, no loss of time, no structural damage, no cargo damage, no equipment damage. Emmert International strives to have the highest quality in safety, professionalism, engineering, logistics, and craftsmanship. All operations were safely performed under the care, custody, and control of Emmert International.